Breaking news today, Israel-Hamas War News Live Update. U.S. warns Israel against reoccupying Gaza. After the ceasefire with Hamas concludes, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has cautioned that Israel will be unable to reoccupy Gaza. Hamas, according to Mr. Blinken, could not maintain its hold on the region because doing so would mean a recurrence of the October 7 assaults. He stated that no forcible displacement, blockade, or territorial reduction should occur and that the Palestinian Authority, which is headquartered in the West Bank, should govern. According to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel will perpetually bear overall security responsibility for Gaza. In a Monday television interview, he made the remark without providing further details. However, a member of his war cabinet confirmed to the BBC that he had not been implying a resumption of occupation. Israeli airstrikes have been directed at the region for the past month, and a significant ground offensive commenced more than a week ago in an effort to eliminate Hamas, an organization deemed a terrorist organization by Israel, the United States, and other Western powers. The hostilities commenced on October 7, following an unprecedented cross-border assault by Hamas on southern Israel, which resulted in the deaths of 1,400 individuals and the capture of 240 others. Since then, the Health Ministry of Gaza, which is controlled by Hamas, reports that over 10,500 people have been slain in the territory, while the United Nations warns of a dire humanitarian situation there. The position of the Biden administration regarding the post-conflict appearance of Gaza was outlined by Mr. Blinken subsequent to a G7 foreign minister's gathering in Tokyo. Key elements, according to the United States, should not include the forcible displacement of Palestinians from Gaza. For the time being, no, not following the war, he replied. Zara cannot be utilized as a staging area for terrorism or other violent assaults. Gaza shall not be reoccupied once the conflict concludes. There was no endeavor to encircle or besiege Gaza. There will be no territorial reduction in Gaza. We must also ensure no terrorist threats can emanate from the West Bank. A sustained peace requires affirmative elements, according to the Secretary of State. It must include Palestinian-led governance and Gaza unified with the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority, he reiterated. And it must include a sustained mechanism for reconstruction in Gaza and a pathway to Israelis and Palestinians living side-by-side -side in states of their own, with equal measures of security, freedom, opportunity, and dignity. Mr. Blinken stated that a transition period at the end of the conflict would be necessary in response to the Israeli Prime Minister's remarks, but he did not believe Israel intended to reoccupy and govern Gaza. Gaza, East Jerusalem, and the West Bank were under Israeli occupation during the 1967 Middle East War. Despite the withdrawal of Israeli forces and settlers from Gaza in 2005, the United Nations continues to classify the region as occupied due to Israel's continued authority over the area's airspace, coastline, and shared border. Ron Dermer, the Israeli Minister of Strategic Affairs, provided the BBC with clarification on Tuesday regarding the meaning of security responsibility, as referenced by Mr. Netanyahu. Governance requires an administration we assume will be Palestinian, he continued. There's a question of the overriding security responsibility, that's what he was talking about, to ensure that in a post-Hamas Gaza we don't have the re-emergence of a terror threat from in Gaza. Israel wasn't operating or doing any operations in Gaza, and we saw what happened over nearly two decades, he continued. They built this terror state right on the south of Israel and we saw the effects of this. Furthermore, he harbored skepticism regarding the suitability of the Palestinian Authority to administer Gaza, given that it oversees portions of the occupied West Bank that are not entirely under Israeli control and is dominated by Fatah, Hamas's rival. They haven't shown their ability there to actively fight terrorism, according to him. The leader of the Palestinian National Initiative, Mustafa Barghouti, was skeptical of what Mr. Netanyahu was publicly declaring. When he says that he wants to keep the security control of Gaza forever that means he's planning to annex Gaza to Israel, he indicated to the BBC.
Mr. Bargoody stated that a unified leadership could lay the foundation for free democratic elections and put an end to the occupation of the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and Gaza Strip. Al-Qaeda is complicit in Israel's Gaza conflict, according to former Jordanian envoy Mwasher. Jordan's former foreign minister stated that Arabs view the United States as complicit in Israel's assault on Gaza due to its refusal to enforce an armistice until Hamas is defeated, an outcome that is remote and may not be feasible. When does the international community determine that enough is enough? In a Zoom interview at the Reuters' next conference in New York, Marwan Almwasher, vice president for studies at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, stated, 10,000 civilian deaths have already occurred. He stated that an armistice between Hamas and Israel must be a top priority because a military resolution to the conflict is impossible until Israel withdraws its occupation of Palestinian territory. Washer, who previously held the positions of Deputy Prime Minister and Ambassador to the United States and Israel, stated, In order to achieve a resolution, it is imperative that we first establish a ceasefire. Subsequently, we must address the occupation, which is the fundamental cause of the conflict and cannot be neglected. It is the longest occupation in modern history, 56 years old, and unless we do something serious about it, I'm afraid that the cycle of violence is going to continue. Since October 7, when Hamas militants breached from the densely populated territory into southern Israel, Israel has initiated a ground and air offensive in the Gaza Strip resulting in the deaths of 1,400 people, mostly civilians, and the capture of approximately 240 detainees. According to Palestinian authorities, the mortality toll in Gaza has surpassed 10,000, with 4,237 minors among the victims. In response to the plight of the 2.3 million Gazans ensnared in the enclave, many of whom are without water, food, medication, or electricity, the violence has stoked protests overseas. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has pledged to eliminate Hamas and stated that a cessation of hostilities would only serve to bolster the organization. Although Washington has rejected calls for a ceasefire, it maintains that humanitarian aid delivery requires interruptions and hostilities. The Arab Street currently views the U.S. administration as implicated in these murders, in my opinion due to the fact that the U.S. is refusing to recognize a ceasefire until Hamas is completely destroyed. That will require an extremely long time. If it is even possible, Washer stated that A.S. stipulated in peace accords from three decades ago. Washer stated that the objective of Netanyahu's far-right government was not to end the occupation or grant Palestine its own state. He stated that instead, it intends to relocate those in Gaza to the Sinai border region of Egypt, and eventually those in the West Bank that is occupied by Israel to Jordan. Appeals for a humanitarian corridor or an escape route for Palestinians from Gaza have prompted the Palestinian Authority, Egypt, and Jordan to caution against a potential escalation in permanent displacement from the territory where they intend to establish a future state. If Israel today does not want to end the occupation and establish a Palestinian state, and clearly it doesn't, and if Israel also does not want a Palestinian majority in areas under its control. The only solution for Israel is to effect a mass transfer of civilians outside the borders it controls, Mwasher added. Mass transfer is real and mass transfer looks like the only logical choice to an Israeli government which does not want to end the occupation, that is the tragedy. He stated that if Israel were truly concerned about civilian casualties, it could permit Gazans to cross its borders into the West Bank. Instead, according to him, it intends to depopulate Palestinian territories from Gaza to Egypt and, in case the conflict escalates, from the West Bank to Jordan. Washer emphasized the critical nature of the international community prioritizing the establishment of a permanent armistice over any sincere endeavor to address the underlying cause, which is the cessation of the occupation. He stated that some leaders, including those in Washington, had begun discussing a political initiative aimed at resolving the dispute. It is imperative that any significant endeavor avoid a recurrence of previous failures, which resulted in an aimless process that does not conclude with the cessation of hostilities, he said, in reference to the peace process that was initiated 30 years ago.
However, there are significant doubts as to whether Washington is willing or able to exert the necessary pressure to influence a serious political process, according to Mwasher. Mwasher predicted that the cycle of violence would persist. But this time around the Palestinians fight for equal rights in territories governed by Israel in what is an apartheid state, rather than a two-state solution.